QuickBooks Online 2024 Export Balance Sheet Reports to Excel. Get ready and some trail mix because we're hiking on QuickBooks Online, our audit trail to success. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product. Because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are online in our browser, searching for QuickBooks Online Test Drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com and the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening up our major financial statement reports like we do every time, the reports, they're on the left. Within the favorites of the reports, we're going to be right-clicking on that balance sheet so we can open link in a new tab. Right-click on the profit and loss so we can open the link in a new tab. Go up to that middle tab that has been opened, close up the hamburger, change the range, bringing it back to the prior year, 2023. 010123 tab, 123 tab, running it to refreshing it, tabbing it to the right in it, closing it up that being the hamburger and then changing it the range in it once again 2023 010123 tab 123 tab run it back to the middle tab that's the setup process that we do every time we've been focusing in on our balance sheet now thinking about how we can provide these reports to a client or supervisor we're mainly thinking in our case as an accountant to give the reports to the supervisor, remembering that presentation for an accountant, no matter where you're at, is typically going to be, you know, most or half of at least the job because the person you're giving the reports to may not know what you're talking about much, but they can at least see if it looks neat, right? So we want to make it look neat. So that'll be, that's important. So how can we provide the reports to somebody? We could get all the reports and email them, but if we do, we want to put the emails at least the reports in order in some way have a secure email and email it out. We could at least zip the files if we email it. We could print the reports, hand them in physically, but that's less often the case these days since everything is automated and whatnot. We could then export the reports to a PDF. That's what we did last time. And if we do that, then we have the options of providing the reports on a uh, cloud drive possibly OneDrive, google uh, cloud drive or something like that or uh, we can then zip the file from there so that when we send it by email it will at least be one attachment instead of 10 attachments uh, or we can export to excel which is not a tool we'll typically use to give to somebody but a tool that we can use to further make any more changes to the reports because we have way more formatting options for reports in Excel. However, the downside that we can't save those changes or memorize them for future report generation. So any changes that you plan on doing in Excel, you want to make sure that they're basic enough that you can be consistent and do them every time. And you can have a pretty easy process with that. And you could put all of the reports on one tab so that you can print all the reports on one PDF file using a PDF printer such as the Qt PDF printer. So that's what we'll do this time. We also talked before about the next option is you can use the management report tools, which is a nice quick little tool uh, report generator tool 
custom within QuickBooks. It's not as flexible as Excel. You can't really customize the reports within it as easily at all, really. But you can uh, at least get them all on one PDF file and with a nice, easy process, which is nice. We talked about that in a prior presentation. So now we're going to get similar reports we looked at before and the same process. We want to customize the reports and put them into a monthly quarterly, yearly system possibly, number them so they'll be in order so that we can then uh, generate them and export them this time to Excel in an order that we want so that we can then put them all on one PDF uh, uh, file using a PDF printer. So we'll have to do this again because this, this software, we're going into this every time new. So I'm gonna generate a similar uh, set of reports summary balance sheet standard balance sheet comparative balance sheet so let's do that right clicking on the tab up top i'm going to duplicate it i'm going to make the reports on the left hand side let's go to the reports on the left close or go into the standard report let's first open up the summary balance sheet that's probably the one that if you use that report you want to present it first probably because it's the easiest one change the range 010123 tab tab uh, 123123, I think I turned my caps lock on. 123123, okay. Run it, and then I'm gonna do my standard customization. Let's do some customizing here. We want the negative numbers bracketed, no pennies. Red for the negative numbers. On the footers, we don't want the date, time, report paces. Remove those, por favor, if you please. And then we'll go ahead and save this, save the customization. I want to put a number one in front of it so that it will be in order. I'm going to add a group. The group's going to be called month end reports. So I did year end last time, back to month end. And that's the one we want. Let's save it and check it. First tab and customize, refresh the screen so it should be able to see it customize reports there it is there's our group there's our report let's go to the tab to the right do a similar thing this time we might want the uh the uh balance sheet maybe we want the balance sheet basically uh by by quarter this time so since i have a summary balance sheet instead of doing the vertical analysis th this time let's imagine that we want to just show the balance sheet by quarters since it's it's the year end report i probably should just, this so let's make it by quarters so now we could give this and maybe I don't need the standard balance sheet because I have the summary balance sheet and this one already includes the information to the end in the last quarter possibly. So I could say this is balance sheet uh, by quarter, I'll just say QT, boom. And let's do our customizing thing up top, making without sense, bracketed numbers, red and header and footer, header and footer date time report basis gone run it let's scroll up save it and i'm going to call this the balance sheet by quarter but i want to put a two in front of it and put it into our group month end reports let's save it all right let's do the one more we're going to go tab to the right i should check that one but i'll check it after this one actually let's just do this one again we'll say another balance sheet horizontal analysis let's go back to where we were total only running it and then i'm going to go up top and say i want just the end month so i'm going to say 120123 tab and then i want to see it on a side by side comparison prior month horizontal analysis run it i'm going to call this balance sheet horizontal analysis horizontal analysis okay and then we're going to say that we want to uh save customization again naming it horizontal analysis number three save it let's see if those three saved back to the first tab refreshing the screen and so there we have the first part is the same i'm going to delete these reports again and I'm just going to imagine that we go in here fresh 
and every month I'm going to go in and generate these reports, change the date range, export them to Excel, do any further customizations I need, and then make one PDF file from the Excel document. So I'm going to right click on this tab, duplicate it, and then I'll first open up the balance sheet summary, which I was already formatted the way we want it. Perfecto, just like Mundo would do it. My friend Mundo being a perfectionist, so I came up with the term Perfecto Mundo. Let's go ahead and export it to Excel. Export to Excel. I'm just going to, uh, let's drag that one into our spot. I have a spot that I wanted it to go. We're going into this QuickBooks and I'm going to go into the navigation reports and I'll, this one's called month end reports. That's cool. It's different. All right. And then I'm just going to drag that one in to here dragging it in ah, i don't want to go don't worry you'll like it over here reports i'm just going to drag you in here and then we're going to say this one is going to be a balance sheet summary so let's right click on this one rename it and it says i just want the end of it balance sheet summary and this is going to be a number one and there we have it so i'm going to open that one up actually wait i'm going to rename this one again and this is going to be i'm just going to put all the reports in this tab so i'm, I'm just going to call this month end report reports i should probably put the date uh 12 dot 31 dot uh dot oath two three now, sometimes you might want to put the date for like the year first and whatnot, because if it's in and you might want to put it up top, so it's in order by the date, year, and then month, and then so on. I'm not going to get into that kind of thing right now. I'm going to put it there. And then we're going to say, okay. And then let's go to the next one. I'm going to tap to the right, right click. I'm going to duplicate this tab again and I'll put it to the right. So I'll put my reports in order. I've got my balance sheet at the end of the quarter and let's go ahead and the dates are good to go. Let's export this one as well. Hitting the drop down export this time. However, I'm going to open up the report. So I'm going to open it up in here, double clicking on it and then enable the editing. Now, before I do anything to it here, I want to get this report into the other tab into my other report uh, where I, where did the other report? I closed it. I want to get it into this report. And so there's a couple ways we could do it. I could make another tab here and copy the whole thing and bring it over. But it might be a little bit easier if I go to the tab down below and I right click on it and I'm going to say move or copy. Now you have to have the two sheets open. So my other sheet is open right now. I want to I can copy it over or I can move it. I might as well just move it. If I hit this, it'll copy it and it'll leave this one here, but I could just move the whole thing. And then if I hit the drop down, I want it to be going into the month end reports. That's the other file that I want it to go to. So I'm going to save it and then boom, it makes another tab. And now I'm in my month end reports. I'm going to drag this to the right, click in that tab, dragging it to the right. Now, remember, if you needed any other formatting, you could do it within here now. So, so for example, if I, if I, a lot of times I'll go to the page layout tab and then back on over. That gives me my page break. So you can see there's a page break right there. That's not good because now there's a page break between the last column, which is going to make a very ugly report when I print it to a PDF. Note that in QuickBooks, there's the automatic formatting that will format for you automatically, but it might change the size of the font and whatnot to do that between reports. So in here in Excel, you can do whatever you need to do. So obviously the first thing I might do is try to try to make this column a little bit smaller. And so do 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 it. And so we could make this column and then that's enough to do it here. Also note, that it exports in here and it uses this merging of the of the uh, cells. I don't like doing that because I can't really as easily do anything to, to the columns because because this long cell sometimes messes it up. So what I often do is remove that. I get rid of that whole thing. 
So I'm like, all right, I don't want that. And now it's left aligned if I want to center it. So any other changes I would then do without having those merged cells. So if you wanted to like if you wanted to make the title like black and white or something, home tab font group, uh, black and white, that's something you can't really do on the other report on uh, within that'll take a lot of ink if you print it, by the way, but it could look nice. It won't take a lot of ink because it's just a header, but it takes more ink when you start, you know, making things reversed colored like that. But uh, you could do things like that in here that you can't do uh, else in the other in, in, in QuickBooks, you could change the font style if you wanted to uh, as well. So maybe you, you want whatever another font style. I'm not a professional at this. I'm just saying a couple touches of changing the font and whatnot could make it could make it look more professional could make you stand out a bit. Uh, you don't want to go overboard because you have to do that every time you export a report that you're going to be providing. But if you only do that exporting and changing process on a monthly basis, it might be worth your time. And then if I want to center it again, I'll select these items. And instead of doing the centering option, where I'll merge the cells, I'll right click on it, and then format the cells. And then I'll go to the alignment and I want to do uh, a center across selection. So now, now it does that without, but it still has these cells as distinct cells instead of one long one. So I could do that here too. I can right click and then format the cells and then say, I want to center across the selection and then I'll do it here, but boom, 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 right click and then format the cells and then it and then center across the selection and so on. Right. And I, I might also within here, you know, you could change the, the, the style of the, of, uh, the formatting of the, of the tech of the numbers. So I might take this and say format cells. And then on the first tab, I might say that I want them to basically be uh, currency, negative numbers, red and bracketed, and no des. I remove the decimals, and so I can adjust the number formatting if I want to, instead of having those dashes in there, so that we have uh, the zeros in there. So just a few options on that. I'll, I won't. I might not do that every time, but if I go back on over here, same thing. I go to the tab to the right, and then the left or the view. There's my page break. So you probably want to center this notice one of the differences between this format here. And if I was to print it out this way, if I looked at this report, for example, and I went to the print and looked at my print option, it centers it nicely, right? So that's one thing that QuickBooks does automatically when you print it to a PDF that way. But you could do that fairly in over here. If I went to the file tab and print it, it Excel puts it up in the top top right corner, right? Because that's just how Excel generally works. But you could then center it yourself by just saying, okay, I'm going to make this cell maybe a little bit wider until it's basically uh, centered here. Or you can put a margin on the left hand side if you wanted to have a margin on uh, the left so that you can basically center it without too much, too much problem. Uh, but I'll just do this basic formatting we did. I'll make this black and white uh, over here and everything fits on one page. That looks good. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, you could, you could even put brackets around it. Sometimes you might, some people like the look of say, maybe putting brackets around, around it. Notice that kind of messed up the number structure. So you could adjust the numbers should be underlined maybe with an underline, right? And so this one, maybe you have an underline instead of the other format that we had liabilities are here. Duh. And then so that's kind of a tedious change to make. Uh, but and you could put a double underline under the here versus versus uh, double underline here. And then maybe we make this one uh, uh, smaller on the total column. And maybe this one a little bit larger. And then I could put a, a cell to the right to kind of center this. 
out uh, without this big space here if I wanted to. But again, those are just some things that you can do. You can do in Excel, which you can't do in other reports. You'd want to do that for all the reports. So if you were to do that, which is a little bit tedious, so be careful with what kind of formatting you want. The point is now, once you do the formatting, I can go to the file tab on the left and I can go to my printing options. And instead of printing it to a printer, I can print it to the cute PDF printer, which means it's gonna to print to a PDF. And then down here, we've got the print uh, active sheets. So what I wanna do is print the entire workbook, not just the one sheet that I happen to be on. So now it starts at the first page. And then if I scroll down, here's the, the second page. Notice this report is two pages long, which I'm not, I don't have a problem with, but I just don't want it to be two pages wide, right? So we can do that. We have that there. And then to do portrait orientation. So we could change the orientation if we needed to. That would be if we had these longer reports, we could change the orientation uh, and we can adjust the margins if we needed to. So the order of adjustments that you would want to do usually would be, I'm going to, if the report is too wide, the first thing I want to do is say, well, could I shrink some cells to make it fit on one page? If yes, keep it portrait. That's what I'll do. If no, then maybe I change it to landscape. So the orientation is under page layout, orientation, landscape landscape hopefully will will make it fit on one page used to be a problem landscape was because uh when you staple pages together now you've got a report that's not going the same way as all the other pages which is not fun but these days the pdf file will still present the landscape sheet as a vertical display as opposed to as opposed to it being sideways right and when you, which is what would be the case when you staple it or something. So landscape is not as big of an issue if you need to do that. Uh, and usually if it's an electronic file, and then uh, if you can't, if you can't do that, then you might, because it's still too wide, then you might see if you can adjust the formatting of the sheet within here. And then your other options are going to the actual printing options. And within the printing options, you can change the margins on the side of the page. You can reduce the margins or you can use the scaling uh, fit sheet on one page, fit all columns on one page. Normally, you don't want to fit the whole sheet on one page because I'm not concerned with how long it is. I'm concerned with how wide it is. This is kind of what QuickBooks does by default, I believe. Now, the problem with this is that if one report fits on a page and the other does not, the way it's going to force it to fit on the page has to be that it reduces like the text size, for example. So now you're going to have two pages of reports that have possibly a little bit different text sizes. That's why it's the last resort typically in, in my thinking, in my thought process. That's how I think about it at least. All right, let's do the last one here and I'll show you how that works. Let's print out this last bit or go to the first tab and open up the horizontal. Let's just open it up in this tab. And then I'll export this one just like we did before. And we'll say export to Excel. I'll just open it up, double clicking on it to open it. And then I'm going to copy it over to the other sheet. Enable the editing. Before I do anything to it, I'm gonna right click on the tab and I'm gonna move or copy. And then within the move or copy, I'm gonna, I'll just move it instead of copying it. So I'll keep it unchecked, hitting the drop down. I wanna move it to my month end reports. Boom, the month end reports has to be open for that to work. I'm gonna say, otherwise you won't see it in the drop down, right? And then say, okay, boom, moves it on over. I'll grab that one and I'll pull it to the right. Now these two tabs have the same name because they started from a balance sheet report. So I could change the tab, double clicking on the tab, balance sheet. Uh, by QT and this tab is a balance sheet, a balance sheet horizontal analysis. I'll just keep it at that. And now this one, if I go to the view to the right and back to the left, it's, it's once again too long. Now I could probably fix this one by adjusting the columns again, but let me just show you what I mean by the, by the page layout horizontal. If I couldn't fix it by adjusting the columns, then possibly I can go into the orientation and make it landscape. 
and now now it fits right so then i would want to go in and once again center i might want to add another column to the left in order to do in order to center it a little bit differently right so so i can so i don't end up with this wide space i can adjust basically my margins within here so i, I could select a right click and uh, insert and so now i have something to work with on the left and the right so these are my two and i could make this a little bit longer until it fits on on you know the two margins here so now i've made the margins basically that way and they're the same size on the two sides of the report which basically centers it now i notice you can do stuff in here again that you can't do in excel like this total i don't need that right that doesn't help so i can delete that uh this line on top i don't need that so i can i can say i can clean this up in ways i can't really do uh in in uh quickbooks so i can get rid of that line and then see this pp for the prior period it's like i don't need that prior period thing so i'm just going to delete that which i can't do in quickbooks i don't believe and then there's the change and so on and so forth you can also change the titles if you if you if you needed to within here if you wanted to call something something a little bit different also note that the net income we talked about was kind of an issue uh before because sometimes if you're a partnership you want to be allocating the net income to the partner capital accounts and the fact that it gives you net income which isn't actually an account becomes kind of a pain so so you could then move this into retained earnings which is where it should properly go for normal uh reporting purposes again you can't really do that in quickbooks but you can make that change in here making it look a little bit more more professional kind of like if you know more like an external reporting form you could do other things like that too because we also talked about the fact that bank accounts are not usually uh what we would call a reporting account we would call it cash and cash equivalents so you could make this call this cash and cash equivalents possibly or something like that the accounts receivable having the sub account so you could anyways you can get into more detail on the editing here is the point for i'll just make this black and white to match what we did before home tab font group black and white and then let's go ahead and just export this thing so we can see what it looks like let's go to the file tab and i'm going to print it using my cute pdf printer so there's the cute pdf printer i've got the entire workbook selected if i scroll down there's page there's the that balance sheet here's the by quarter one here's the end of the by quarter one here's the balance sheet horizontal analysis it fits on one page it's pretty nice and fairly centered so that's good and then here's the end of it and there it is so let's go ahead and print it out and instead of going to a printer it's going to go to a cute pdf printer which will look like this and then i want to put it into my desktop desktop and then i put it in the quickbooks online and then a navigation folder so i think that's good let's go ahead and just save it there and then i'm going to find it where are you where did you go so there's our month end reports so i can open it up from here in the pdf and i can attach this one pdf to an email if i wanted to or send it some electronic way with just one file instead of the multiple files that we saw before and uh we can we have the formatting that we could do within excel for it uh, and if we email it to someone we can attach it with just one attachment and then within the attachment you've got all the reports here's our balance sheet and then here's our our uh, craig's design another balance sheet <laughs> and then notice this one here's the landscape one so see it didn't like if you stapled it if you imagine printing these out and stapling it it was actually a big problem because then you can you have to put the report you have to reverse it and put it this way so they fit with the other reports and then it's like well do you want the reports facing like this way or do you want them facing this way and so on and you certainly don't want two reports that are landscape that are facing different ways because that would be awkward that would be weird so confuses frustrating so but now it just shows it straight uh vertical even if it's landscape if you open it up normally in a pdf so if you look at that look compared to this one this is how that the first report looks uh if you just printed out st stock out of uh out of quickbooks and you, there's not a whole lot of formatting you could do other other than take the 
the decimals away. Although most of the reports look nice and clean and fine, the only so there's pros and cons to either way that you want to print the report. The management report thing tool that we saw also if that was over here had a little bit different look and feel to the reports. So if I go into here and I preview this thing, it's got the intro page, da, 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 but then the reports again look a little bit different here, right? So so it just depends on what what style you want the reports to be in, but a little bit of tweaking of the reports that's a little bit different than the standard that is is uh, just the, the, the default out of the box might make your reports stand out a little bit a little bit more right so so something like this I, if you did that double underline thing or something like that or just made your title different or changed some fonts or something like that then that that is going to stand out a bit from other quickbooks users because they're probably not taking the time to do that added step you could also combine the uh the make a title page in excel if you wanted to like i could make a title page in excel which is a little bit difficult to make than making it in a word processor like word but you can make a nice title page in excel so that you can still have a title page and everything that you want within excel or you can try to integrate excel and word meaning integrate this into word and get really fancy so that you can print the whole thing out uh, that's integrated from Excel and Word onto a onto a uh, uh, one PDF file if you so choose. So those are just some of the options for the presentation.